here we have a sound calibration system. Now I'll put you on to introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Tim Holmes. Sure. I'm Tim Holmes, and my company is Acoustics. I have my ma equipment manufactured by USL. Um, and uh, this system is a comprehensive system to allow a theater technician to properly align the sound in the cinema so that the ideas will translate to the dubbing stage. And the whole concept in, in cinema is that the sound should translate from the dubbing stage through the uh, final listener in the auditorium. And that's what this system is intended to do in a simple and easy to follow manner. So now on the screen here, uh, currently we have some ambient noise, so it, it's, it's giving us basically uh, not the, the sort of um, thing you would see when you're doing a calibration in cinema, but this screen uh, will help you uh, understand that the levels across the, fi across the range should come within those red, yellow and red lines. And wh wh what is this called? Yeah, the, the lines represent the X-curve, which is a cinema standardized way of tuning a room so that in a larger room versus a smaller room that the sound will be subjectively the same. And that's the whole principle behind it. And uh, it's not a perfect system, but it works quite well. And in other audio industries, they don't have this, so we have an advantage in cinema. And this, so this program, this system, allows rooms to be tuned in such a manner that they will be translatable from different size rooms. Now, there's quite a bit of talk of automatic X-curving, and I just want your opinion on, on the, the difference in quality you expect auto between auto and someone doing it manually. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of work being done on automatic EQ, and it's a very difficult topic. Some people, there have been good advances in it, and in general, um, especially for cinema applications, I rec strongly recommend people do it manually because uh, you can quickly get uh, automatic uh, tuning, but in general, your, your results will be variable and not trustworthy, I don't think. So in my opinion, I always recommend people do the, the manual adjustment using their ears, using their common sense, and listening to make sure they come out with a proper X curve. That's really the only way to get a good sound in the room, in my opinion. Now, now quickly, um, looking at this equipment, obviously we've got the, the computer giving us feedback from the microphones and some sort of box where you plug them all in and the microphones displayed here. How many microphones do you need and where do you put them in the cinema? Right. Uh, many studies have been done on this and the optimum number has, come, has been determined to be four microphones. Five microphones doesn't give you a much greater improvement. Three microphones to four is a significant improvement. So the studies show us that four microphones is the appropriate number. Microphone one is the key microphone, and that's put in either in a reference position, it's also called Dolby position. The other microphones then are gain leveled so that they have the equal contribution to the timbre in the room. And so if you put them in a diamond array, corner them in the center of the room, then this thing, when you average the pink noise over time, you will get a good representation of what the sound is in the room. And pink noise represents a, as close as you can get to the subjectively what music and sound in a film uh, is. So if you tune with pink noise and you put it on the X curve, then you'll get, have a very good chance of getting an accurate sounding movie. Thank you very much.